I had planned to make a Legacy Goblins video this week, but games were going very, very badly. So I decided to step away from things that tilt me and play some Cube instead. That's right boys and girls, Cube is back on MTGO, but this ain't your grandfather's Cube. No, that was buried with him in the New Forest under express wishes in his will. I'm Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi on the internet. I'm the large at the gathering, content creating equivalent of a rash on the inside of your thigh you got from that handsome chap with a beard. It might be itchy and uncomfortable, but oh boy was it worth it. This is Corset Q, where the vast majority, if not all of the cards are from a Magic the Gathering corset from across the last 25 years of the game. So essentially, who wants to relive the glory days of M11 Limited where we all clamber to open titans? Yeah. Me too. All jokes aside, I absolutely love different and interesting ways in which we can play a game. I even enjoyed a bit of brawl and tiny leaders when those flashes in the pan came around. But this reason, I love myself a bit of cube, especially differing versions of cubes like this one. It's up there, close behind Legacy, for being one of my favourite ways to play Magic, and I love that they're utilising MTGO to bring us different cubes to play with. For those of you that don't know what a cube is, a cube is a custom draft environment that is drafted phantom. It means that you don't get to keep the cards at the end of it. This way, you have really interesting draft environments packed full of powerful cards with high rarities. In cube it's often better to draft an archetype other than just good stuff in certain colours as all the cards tend to be good compared to the varying power levels of your average cards found in limited. Therefore the route to victory is having an archetype or collection of synergies that will you know grind out or overpower your opponent in some way. And before we jump right into the draft I just want to make an exciting announcement. As of GP Liverpool which is on the weekend of the 7th of December I will officially be a full-time content creator through the support of Twitch subscriptions, viewers like yourselves, advertising revenue, sponsorships and Patreon, I am able to drop my day job to focus on bringing you more and more content like this. That means more gameplay, more slow plays, more fucking about, more streams, and just, just more. The channel will grow massively thanks to this. So I want to say thank you to everyone who has watched my videos, commented, or shared them, or engaged with me at all in the last sort of 12 to 18 months. My largest patrons are on screen now. These are my splicers that join me on calls at least once a week to discuss deck ideas, chin wag, and generally banter about life and magic and everything in between. If you want to join the Discord to hear people complain about pineapple on pizza, follow the link in the description below to sign up for just $2 a month to get access to the discord alongside access to the discord you can help me to put food on the table and make more content like this you're helping me directly to make entertainment for you and of course a shout out to my sponsors mtgo traders and cape for games have been with me since the beginning of me taking this seriously they have supported me in many ways from financial to helping me with cards to make weird brews and stream tier decks i owe them a lot and i can't recommend them enough when looking to pick up cards if you use the discount code on screen now to get eight percent off your order you're also supporting the channel one. And last but not least, a big shout out to my friends over at Cardsphere.com. Cardsphere is the best place for you to start trading your physical cards online. It's all done in dollars without a fictional hocus pocus currency in sight. Cardsphere are doing God's work to promote and engage with smaller creators like myself and they deserve some love. And on that note, it's time to queue. Cube, 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 cube. Pack one, pick one, no Titan. We see a Walker, which is usually a solid early pick, but this Liana is, well, a bit shit, really, and it favours a mono black deck, which is just too much of a commitment for me. Kind of like that friend that always wants to book a table for lunch for two weeks in advance, and you have to explain that you're quite busy and want to only pencil in that lunch date, and they start to feel insecure and question whether or not their friendship means anything to you, and you just feel awful, but it's not your fault that you can't commit. It comes from something deep inside you, something that probably happened in your childhood, a fear of commitment that might just leave you old and alone with no significant other to care for you in your old age. No children, just piles and piles of magic cards and perhaps a shit ton of unedited legacy goblin footage on your hard drive. So we take Fireball because it's a solidly safe, splashable first pick. Pat 2 is pretty unexciting. Now, at the time of recording, I hadn't actually looked at the suggested archetypes in the reveal article. I thought going in blind would be a good idea for some reason. Why I thought that, no one will ever know. In spite of my huge soft spot for stab wound as a card, I decided to stick to one colour for now and pick up more burn or removal. In hindsight, it's a double red card, so it's not really splashable, but I was never a fan of the movie Splash anyway. Yeah, that was a bad joke. We then see our first voice card, which is our essentially shit titans. Does anyone remember the voice cycle in Standard? Not like remember the time they were in Standard, but actually remember them seeing any play in Standard. Yep. 
Me neither. Although I say they are shit titans, even a shit titan is still a titan. These are solid bombs in limited, cube, or otherwise. I'm torn between Soul of Zendikar and Gutter Snipe here, and end up swaying away from green because I always fucking draft green and cube. So we take the sniper. We then see Equilibrium and we just take it. This card is absolutely nuts. It's so much fun to play with. You can play in a deck with decent end of the battlefield effects, and it is a great way to generate huge tempo against other decks as well. Your opponents, as you can use it to bounce their creatures when you play play creatures as well. Yeah, it's great. I see an early City of Brass and a load of other cards that are relatively unexciting when paired with your current picks, so I take the City to get some fixing. I think this pack is bad enough to take Unsummon, but then I realise that I almost blank and don't realise a Pia and Kirin Nala in here. This card seems absolutely solid with Equilibrium. If we find ourselves trying to grind people out, we can just bounce it for value. We take Pyrotechnus as an easy pick as Removal and Burn. Fairy Conclave again as an easy pick as the rest of the pack looks pretty weak for us. It is fair to say from this pack that green is open so we could look to pivot into that but instead we take quicken we're shaping up to be a bit of a spell slinger deck uh, Quicken was a weird pick. I don't know what the fuck I was thinking. However, Harbour Jewel is a great tempo card here, and Mirrored Image is also fine to pick up here as well for our deck. So we're looking like we're some sort of tempo strategy. We end up picking up green and white chaff that no one else wants for the last couple of picks. Pack two, pick one. What have we got? Well, the pack looks pretty dull for us. So this tempo spells like a deck. However, we could pivot or perhaps double down on the blue red artifact archetype that Tezzeret, Psy, and in Soul Artifact suggest exist within the cube. Problem is, if we pick pick one of these, can we realistically wield the others or are other people fighting over that archetype as well? I decided that it might not be possible it isn't worth the risk, so I take the Soul Blade Jin as it plays well with burn spells and removal, progressing our whole team. He also has super cool art like some sort of Jin cruise missile. I think Shaquille O'Neal would be proud of this guy. Watch it boy! You don't wanna diss me! So another dud pack for us, so I have an idea. Why not splash for Nico Bolas? Sweet. I feel sad to pass a Hornet Nest considering its legacy on this channel, but we instead opt to take Peel from Reality here as Tempo and ETB value cards. I just don't rate Jace's Mindseeker very highly at 6 mana, so I don't think that's a viable pick here. We pick up a Chandra's Phoenix over a Searing Spear. Another particularly bad pack comes round. We take a Drowned Catacombs which allows us to splash for the, for the Nickel Bolas of our mana. Lightning Strike is a solid pickup though, mid-pack here. And we notice that green might still be open as this Thrag Tusk is knocking about. Fucking hell. Archaeomancer combo as well with our reuse of ETB effects and can buy back our burner removal spells. In Soul Artifact wields, so I feel a bit silly not taking some of the payoffs for that, but we take Augur Bolas instead. Although I have no idea why I do this because I never ever like it in Limited. We pick up some chaff, including Elite Arcanist, which you probably won't play. That said, we do pick up the Blue Soul, Soul of Ravnica, which is a perfectly solid 6 drop 6 6 flyer that can also draw us cards. It's got like sort of uh, incidental value as well as being a, like, a sort of bomb flyer. Pack 3, pick 1 an on-colour Planeswalker, and we hope to wheel one of these blue cards here. We pick up this Artless Opportunity because MTGO is a quality program. Another piece of burn removal, so we take it over the Dragon Fodder, but besides prioritise creatures from this moment out. We take Whirl of Rogue, as it's a body that brings bodies. Next pack I really want to take is Fixing, and we also have a lot of four drops at the moment, which is a bit weird considering we're trying to curve out with some tempo, but we also need bodies, so I just take Ogre Battle Driver. I really want to take this Nickel Bolas here, but it's double black, so I opt to take the more sensible pick, which is a body that brings a body. It synergizes well with our ability to reuse into the battlefield effects in our deck and can be a lot of damage off of an Ogre Battle Driver as well. We take a Treason effect that we probably won't play over Turn to Frog as our next pick. Ponder as a late pickup feels pretty solid. Although we're getting cut on red, we are picking up some very good blue cards that are floating around quite late. We wield the Tidebinder and the Negate and the Lynx. So we take the Lynx as a solid tempo card against decks with creatures. We pick up Quickling and Highland Lake in our last few picks. We end up with a spell in a deck that isn't deep enough in the archetype, but I think it's solid enough so we could probably pick up some wins here off the back of some of the engines like, like Equilibrium for example. I do regret not committing to the artifact plan earlier, but well, that sucks to me not doing any fucking research really. We settle on this build, the last cut being Pyrotechnics. Hindsight says we probably should have just played that main board, but as the old saying goes, hindsight is Marit Lage. Round 1 we mulligan a dreadful two lander into a solid, if a little slow, six. We top the whirler because ponder will dig us into extra lands, I hope. Our opponent leads birds of paradise, we ponder, find the land and a removal spell and a way to rebuy that burn spell. Good fucking shit. They play a wild grove and nothing else. We play a tap land. 
nice, exciting magic here. They resolve an Elvish Arch Druid that they must have just drawn as they could have played it last turn and don't hit a land drop. I untap and burn the Druid's tits off. How exquisite. Arbor Elf then means that they will have access to six mana next turn. That is Titan mana. We cast the Chandra and pew pew the little Elfie. Bye bye. They play an evolutionary leap and miss yet another land drop. Chandra continues to chew through their mana dorks as we pew pew the bird and they leap it into a seven mana Sphinx of Ruthun. It also reveals Overrun as one of their cards for us to keep in mind for game two or three. We slam Nicol Bolas the Ravager and they discard the Sphinx. That's awkward. Then they Phantasmal Image my Bolas, so then we discard Whirler, which is stupid actually, as it can kill the Phantasmal Image with its targeted ability at no cost of cards or mana. That's a punt. We then untap, play a land, and zero Chandra to reveal a land that we could have played, missequenced. That's a punt. It also looks like the fact that I could have upticked Chandra to kill the Bolas as a Phantasmal Image is also a punt. We play a Pia and Kirin in a large and provide protection for Chandra. Don't worry, this is by far the worst turn of the whole league. It's only up from here. I choose not to offer the trade as I can flip my bolus next turn and they can't. We pass back having thoroughly fucked this turn up. We chump with a Thopter to protect Chandra from the attack. Next turn we ping the bolus once we come to our senses and they leap it away in response to find a scoos. We flip Nooka Bolas before combat to send a message. They scoop it up as we tick up to draw cards. Looks like they might struggle to deal with this board state. I don't blame them, this looks fucking sick. We mulligan a seven card one lander into a moderate six. We have brung in mutiny to swing back at them with whatever ramped out fatties they play. They leave with an Arbit Elf that slaps us on turn two. We let them strike it dead. They play nothing, so we take the turn off to play Equilibrium. They then play a Skews. We play Instigator and bounce the Skews with Equilibrium. God, that feels so good. This card is so much fun. They play a moderately sized Nissa and tap a load of lands and we play a Skews. I play Battle Driver and I bounce the Skews using Equilibrium again. We attack and take Nissa to two. Our opponent untaps and plays a Primeval Bounty. They turn a forest into a creature and they claim that was a mistake and they meant to untap lands. We cast a tower guard and use equilibrium to bounce our own goblin and get it to hand, which should allow us to power out six extra damage next turn through the battle driver and bounce one of their blockers. It feels strong. Tower guard also allows us to put Soul of Ravnica into the graveyard, which feels solid as we can activate it from there later down the line. That's called synergy. We attack and kill Nissa and do some damage to the face. They untap with a creature and I realise that his Nissa keeps this forest as a creature indefinitely. I I thought it turned back to being a forest, but meh, what's the worst that can happen? Then our opponent casts Time Warp. Oh, fuck. Probably Bounty puts three plus one plus one counters on the land and it smashes us for seven, taking us to nine. They untap for the second turn and play some mana ramping enchantment, pumping the land to a 10 10, and we are fucking dead. We died pretty hard to that Time Warp, and we could just bounce their creature with our equilibrium instead of getting cute. Um, yeah, but you can't play around Time Warp in all fairness. We have an Unkeepable 7 that does literally nothing. We mold a 6. Confirmed, MTGO fucking hates me. We mold a 5. Whilst this 5 is pretty fucking bad, it can't be worse than most 4s. We keep it, play a land, and pass. Our opponent also mold to 6 and plays no turn 1 play. We draw our second land and pass. They play a defender that makes mana. We untap, draw, run a third land in red, and use it to play Equilibrium because it's better to be lucky than good. It's time to generate some tempo. On their turn, they do nothing, suggesting to me their hand is full of fatties. We play an instigator and bounce the mana wall. They play a wall and a skews. We take a turn off to play Chandra and ping them and the skews, but decide not to attack. They then mirror him to second skews into play. I ping him at Chandra thinking it's a phantasmal image because I wasn't paying enough attention because I was on Facebook looking at messages instead of at the game at hand. I slam a world of rogue and let's draw a land to fire off my removal next turn, possibly using Chandra to try and hit this. They attack Chandra for two and she takes it on the chin like a badass. We draw and play a land. I attack like a fucking mad lad. Our opponent blocks and kills the 1-1 one -one here with the Scoos. We ping the Chandra and they eat a 1-1 one -one to save the Scoos. Or so they think. We use Pyrotechnics more effectively than Ramstein concert here to kill both Scoos and shoot our opponent for one in the face. Ideally we want them to block a 2-2 with their wall so we could wrap them. But sometimes you just don't get to have your cake and eat it. They do nothing on their turn again with 5 cards in hand. I assume they must have cards that need double blue in hand. We charge Chandra's Phoenix, bounce the wall and slap them upside the head. They take a draw and scoop it up.
We see yet another dodgy hand because apparently running 17 lands isn't enough. We keep it rather than the mulligan. They lead with everyone's favourite bad version of Noble Hierarch. We play a tap land, they hit us, trigger Renown, play an elf and fetch up a land. More green ramp, eh? We play an untapped land, but unfortunately we can't fireball this mana dork for one. It's probably the only one mana mana dork in the cube that we probably can't do this to. Sadness. So we make some gobos. They ramp with wood elves, then they ramp with farsi. Oh, fucking Jesus Christ, that's a lot of mana. We link down the mana dork for a turn. They bribery us and grab an ogre battle driver. I guess on the upside, most of our creatures are just bad. So bribery isn't that painful here. We tower guard a soul of into the graveyard again. Can you smell that synergy? Can you smell it? Mmm, smells like yeast. They play out a cutthroat vampire thing on our links and tapping down our only token for some reason. That felt suboptimal, but hey, whatever. They attack with a load of stuff. I make some trades but leave the battle drive around because A, we can't make a profitable blocks on it, and B, we can bounce it to replay it ourselves later on down the line, potentially. We untap and play a Kazam. I am Kazam! Our genie, despite living inside a fucking lamb, gets claustrophobic. Man, this is either one hell of a flavor fail or the worst possible situation for our poor little genie. We trade a 2 2 for their 2 2. We copy our genie with our own mirror image. I mean, what's better than two genies? That wasn't a hypothetical question, guys. Generally, what do you think is better than two genies? Do you have an answer? I'll tell you what's better than two genies. Anal. I mean, do genies have anuses? We swing with a 1 1. They offer to trade, but wait. Genie tricks. We strike the ogre dead. And double prowess leaves us with a beefy gobble that lives through combat. Got him! They untap, cast Seaborn Muse, and untap again in our turn. We fireball that Seaborn shitbag to death and swing for nine. They chop the gobble and go to 14. They make a land drop. I cast an Augur and look at the top three cards of my library, then put them on the bottom of my deck because that's all Augur does in limited. Why I keep picking and playing him in limited with the cube or whatever, I will never fucking know. I swing for five. Liliana, heretical heal from our opponent. I take the opportunity to cast opportunity. Lulz, they scoop. In game two, our hand is clunky, but it's hard to mulligan lands and spells. They play a Vistra Seal, we play a tap land. We take one damage, untap, play a land, and pass. We take another one damage, aggressive. I cast my new favorite three mana enchantment. Our opponent temporarily goes AFK to finish off writing their autobiography. Five minutes later. They play nothing and attack us again. We play a Phoenix, bounce their vamp, and get the Phoenix countered. Of all the spells we countered though, we're okay with this. Then the weirdest thing happens. Our opponent plays their own copy of Equilibrium. Is this the mirror? We play our links for no value as we have to progress the board and force them to play creatures. They play a seer but choose not to bounce the links due to the fact that the ETB is just too good to allow us to have it again. We get our Ramstein on and pyrotechnic his seer and his face. Which in turn causes him to sack the seer for a scry and triggers our phoenix to come back to hand. Wow you. Lynx gets in for two damage, they ramp in growth. We attack for two and then cast a soul of Ravnica. Remember, he's got soul, but he's not a soldier. What the fuck does that even mean? They play a Gilded Lotus and we smack them down to three, then cast an Archimancer to retrieve our burn. They put our creatures to sleep with sleep and play a blocker. We untap and just pyro them so hard that they have second degree burns. This is no laughing matter though, kids. If you or someone you know is playing with firework, stop. Drop the firework. I mean, drop the fire if it's not lit. Don't just drop it if it's lit. If, it, if it's lit, put it out. Okay, just don't just don't light fireworks in the first place. They're dangerous, okay? They're also really loud and keep my dog up as well and make him all nervous and shit. It's just, just stop. Fireworks are, are shit. Leave it to the professionals. This public service announcement was brought to you in part by Value. We mulligan a two-lander with no plays into a two-lander with no plays with better mana. Should I be on 18 lands? Honestly, is 17 too few? Tell me in the comment section below. I don't know if I'm just being an idiot here. They revoke something. I can't remember what. And we straight dead. We ponder, hit land drops, and they play Mindstone into Gilded Lotus over two turns into Bookcase Enchanting Warrior Man. This Mindstone becomes a 5-5 bookcase. I don't fancy being twatted by a 5-5 cast member from the Disney Beauty and the Beast movie, so I kill the animator with exquisite firecraft. Sculpting Steel copies Gilded Lotus, which means they've got a lot of mana, like approximately one million. Then it happens. Just when I thought I was going to get to play some magic, just when I thought I couldn't get my lands blown up as this isn't an episode of Commander Clash or isn't a game of legacy, our opponent casts Wildfire. I, I sacrifice all of my lands. Sadness is placed onto the stack. 
we take a moment to shed a tear for the lands that have fallen before us. Please go to the comment section now if you have a heart and press F to pay your respects. You see, I've seen things you people wouldn't believe. Fell flagships called in off the shoulders of pirate Stompy. I watched blasphemous acts glitter in the darkness of modern, but all those moments would be lost in time like lands in a wildfire. Some more magic is played, but none of it's by me. I remember it faintly. There was a maniacal dragon with delusions of grandeur, a more powerful than my lack of mana could contest with. Yeah, he flipped the nickel bollocks ravager and I scooped it up. Fuck that noise. Okay, so this wildfire deck seems pretty good and I have no counter magic and no way to interact with artifacts, so the only way I can do it, uh, because my drafting was bad, is probably to aggro or temple with the mounts. Our deck is too clunky and the four drop slots don't really achieve that, so I don't think we can win this. But I'm gonna give it a go. An average and rather slow seven, so I ship it away. We keep a handful of things that can attack and we hope for the best. They artifact ramp a little and we hit them in the face a little. They play a Nicole Kidman the Ravenger and we discard our five drop. We play a freshly drawn Ogle Battle Driver. They tap out for a Gilded Lotus, which means they can flip Nicole Kidman next turn. Shit. There was a lot of thought that goes into this. I can make a flyer that swings a 4-2, but that does little here. So we play a Chandra out instead to try and force the Nicole Kidman to have to be used to deal with our Walker. Thing is, with Battle Driver in play, either Pia and Kirin or Whirler at Road present 10 damage each off the top of our deck with haste. We, so we have a way to explosively just burst kill our opponent if we can maneuver to that situation. We take up Chandra in order to allow her to survive one attack from Nicole over there. They attack Chandra to take it to one, flip Nicole, and then reanimate our own genie. This is fine, this is good, we can easily beat this. Then, well, it happens. So you see, that's where the trouble began. That smile. That damn smile. Phyrexian Revoker, naming Chandra. Maximum tilt achieved. Oh, for fuck's sake. We play one spooky motherfucker and swing wildly at the cold. If we can get them to overcommit to the crack back when they're attacking, we may have a chance to kill them out of nowhere with our battle driver. The ghost actually finds a world that was wild if put to our hand. Oh boy, we, we might be doing this. We might actually just be doing this. We might actually get to kill them. No blocks, Nicole shows in her dice. Amaze balls. They play an artifact, then cast wildfire. Hello darkness, my old friend. I've come to talk with you again. There is no coming back from that. My deck was not set up to deal with this nonsense. All I know is that next time I play Cube, I'm drafting Wildfire. That card seems super fun for at least one person at the table. So I went 2-1 with our first foray into this cube and I enjoyed drafting it blind, if I'm honest. It was quite fun. I want to film some more, but I want to know if you a lot are keen to see more cube. My limited videos have historically done a lot worse than my modern ones, but sometimes you gotta, you know, break it up, spice it up, and try something different. If it proves popular enough, I'll make another cube video. In the meantime, send me post the dress on screen. I will open it up on camera. Way the shit, the better. I'll make a bad unboxing video, and then the best bits will actually make it into these videos. Between rounds. Let me know if you liked the video. Was there anything in the video you would have had me do differently? Was there any gameplay that I, I made a mistake on? Let me know. And what do you think of the new cube? Uh, have you played it and what have you drafted and what do you think is the best archetype in it? What do you want to see from me in the future in the next couple of weeks? Drop me a comment below and tell me down below. I've been Vince, also known as Pleasant Kenobi. Don't forget to like, comment, share and click that fucking bell so I can ring a ding ding in your beautiful little ears. I'll see you all very, very soon.